In this video, we're gonna talk about dynamic trunking protocol. Dynamic trunking protocol allows these trunking lines to automatically set up. And there's some configurations that we can do to set up this dynamic trunking protocol or DTP. So let's get into, in this video, DTP. Not a lot of topics to cover in this one. We're just going to talk about what is DTP and we're also going to talk about DTP settings. Although from a setting perspective, you're setting connections on both sides of the trunk line. And so there's an interplay with these different settings that we will get a little more in depth into. DTP is dynamic trunking protocol. In a prior video, we learned how to set up a trunk between two devices. But the problem is, is that if we had to do that every time, some of the Cisco equipment wouldn't work straight out of the box. And so when we connected two brand new pieces of equipment, we might not necessarily have that full functionality. And so dynamic trunking protocol allows these devices to establish a trunk line between these devices with very little configuration. And so let's get into dynamic trunking protocol and what it looks like in some of the settings that we can configure on DTP. When it comes to dynamic trunking protocol settings, your port can be assigned one of four different settings. So first of all, something we've already done before is set up a port as an access port and it just wants to be an access port or we could set it up as a trunk port. And then multiple VLANs can go across that, where an access port, there's only gonna be one VLAN that goes across there. All right, so then we have these two other settings. We have this dynamic auto and dynamic desirable. The dynamic desirable says I desire to be a trunk line. So I'm, if I have an option, I am going to try to be a trunk line but I could be an access port if I need to be. Versus dynamic auto says, all right, I'm going to just work out with whatever I have uh, going on the other side. So if it's an access port, I'll be an access port. If it's a trunk port, I'll be a trunk port. If the other side says they're a dynamic desirable, then I'm going to be a trunk port and we'll just work out that we're both trunk ports. And if I happen to, connect to another dynamic auto, then what we'll do is we'll establish an access port instead. So depending on what your intentions are for these different ports, you may want to set it up differently. So what happens is this switch right here says, oh yeah, I would like to do this. And this switch would right here says, oh, I'd like to do that. And if they're ingredients, then they can talk. And so if they're both access ports, they can talk. If they're both trunk ports, they can talk. If they're one's a trunk port and one's one of the dynamic settings, then they can talk. And the interplay between these two devices uh, is, you know, they're chatting back and forth with this protocol uh, saying, hey, I'd like to do this and that. Uh, they can establish what kind of connection it is. But depending on what the two settings are on each of the sides, there's going to be some different interactions. Let's take a look at what those interactions look like. Across the top here is representing the settings for a switch port on one switch. And then the ones across the left are representing the settings on another switch. So switch one is set to an access port and switch two is set to an access port. Then they are going to create an access port together. All right, so now as you see this, most of the ones that are right here should be somewhat self-explanatory. That is, is if I have one side set as an access port, it is going to try to be an access port. So if it's connecting to an access port, it's an access port. If it's connecting to one of the dynamic settings, then it's gonna be an access port. So that's what we're seeing right here. Those, that explains all of that. Or if one of the settings, if either switch one or switch two is set up to be a trunk port, then it's going to be a trunk port if it's connecting to another trunk port or to one of the dynamic setting 
What may not be quite as clear is what happens when a dynamic port connects to another dynamic port. And so what that's going to depend on is whether we have dynamic desirable setup or a dynamic auto setup. If it's dynamic desirable, then it's striving to be a trunk port. So if it can be, it will be a trunk port. So that's where we see right here, trunk ports, if one of them is set to desirable and the other one is set up to whatever other uh, dynamic setting there is, it's gonna be a trunk port. So the only time that we really see an port, access port is when there is a dynamic auto connected to a dynamic auto, then it will turn into a access port. So that just leaves us now with the two conflicts of interest here. We've got a trunk port trying to access and a, an access port, and that's going to have limited connectivity. So that's where we get these times when it's really not going to communicate well at all, and you're not really going to get the functionality of an Ethernet port when you have that conflict when one's a trunk port and one's an access port.